Thank you, Tyler. Ted, thanks for joining us today from the Spirit headquarters in Miramar, Florida. Uh, I know you can't go into details about the uh, tender offer of $30 a share. You still need to go over it with the rest of the board from Spirit. But what's your reaction to JetBlue coming back and making yet another bid to buy Spirit? Uh, well, thanks for having me on, Phil. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, you're right. We can't comment uh, on the tender offer until our board has had time to review it. But I think what we can talk about is uh, the prior proposal that we received for them at $33 a share and why our board determined that it was not a superior proposal to our current uh, merger agreement with Frontier. And it really circles around the primary issue of whether or not that transaction could be consummated. And we invested extensive time uh, with JetBlue and their regulatory um, advisors, along with our regulatory advisors um, and financial advisors, reviewing the strategy and looking at way ways that it might possibly get done. And what we determined is that it's not likely to be approved. And it really boils down to a couple of things. First and foremost, JetBlue is in active litigation with the Department of Justice today on the Northeast Alliance with American Airlines. And we view that as a very critical issue as it relates to trying to solicit additional regulatory approval. And in addition to that, it's problematic because it is a higher fare, higher cost airline buying one of the largest ULCCs in the Americas. And so for those reasons, and, and, and our board did put a tremendous amount of effort into this, they determined that it was not likely to be consummated and therefore not superior. Okay, Ted, there's a disconnect here. Because when I talked to Robin Hayes, he says you guys didn't do your due diligence. An exact quote from him is, we've been disappointed by their lack of engagement, meaning your lack of engagement. We don't think the Spirit Board did its fiduciary duty considering our offers. They have hidden behind the regulatory approval argument as a smokescreen. Basically, Ted, he says you guys didn't do your job. You didn't really consider their offers. What do you say to that? Well, I think that's a bit frustrating that they're putting misinformation in the market because the truth is, is farther from that. We, we engaged with JetBlue early on in their process and spent the better part of a month in back and forth with them, numerous conversations between us and them and their regulatory uh, advisors. In addition to um, uh, diligence, we opened up our, our data room to them. We had an extensive call with them. I, I participated in a diligence call with myself and my CFO, with Robin and their CFO, and they asked us all the questions they wanted to ask us about the business. And in fact, at the end, complimented us on being transparent uh, and productive. So we felt that that whole process, quite frankly, was very constructive. Uh, so we're a little surprised and frustrated that they're spreading that misinformation. Our board invested considerable time and effort in reviewing their proposal and determined it was not superior. Ted, you know their commentary on Wall Street. There are a lot of people who think, forget about JetBlue. The merger between Spirit and Frontier doesn't have much of a chance of getting through with this administration. Do you honestly think that you can, can do a combination and it will get DOJ approval? I do honestly think that, Phil. In fact, it's one of the reasons that uh, we're excited about that transaction is this is a different type of deal. The reason that we view the JetBlue deal as problematic is, is the antithesis to the way we look at the Frontier deal. These, these are two like-minded, low-cost businesses. They're looking to expand and drive more stimulation with lower fares. This is not a discussion about capacity constraint and higher fares, which is what we're hearing out of the JetBlue camp. And we view that as very problematic from a regulatory perspective, whereas with our frontier transaction, it's about growth. It's about more low fares. We think it's going to be very good for, for our, our shareholders because it's going to have tremendous synergies as we extract additional utilization and, um, and flying out of the combined business. It's great for team members. We're going to create 10,000 10, plus sure. jobs over the next five years um, and good for consumers, you know, over a billion dollars in, in savings that we think we can deliver.